Good morning, welcome back. It is Monday morning. Um, this morning I'm gonna go and get a DX50 serviced. It'll be its first service and the first time I've serviced a DX50. So um, what it's gonna be like, I'm not sure yet. Um, so I'm gonna do that this morning. If you remember back to last week, uh, Friday I went to go and see a 160 in the woods there for an oil leak and the slew motor housing looked like it had cracked and it was leaking oil. So I have a new slew motor coming, um, which I ordered on Friday. Looking on the parts, it doesn't look as though it's been shipped yet or it hasn't got a tracking number. So there's no definite, yes, it'll be here today, basically is what I'm saying. So I'll go and get this digger serviced and then we'll go from there with how the day pans out. Um, there are other jobs that I can go and get done if it doesn't turn up and we'll have it to do tomorrow so we'll see um so yeah i went to, um it was my wife's idea actually we took the kids down to liverpool yesterday afternoon and we went to go and see ollie blog's uh christmas tractor run and so i did uh filmed the whole thing when it went past there's about eight and a half minutes of that and um, which i'll either put on the end of this video if there's sort of slim pickings today um, or I'll save it up for in between Christmas and the new year maybe um, but it was a fantastic event really really good I mean you know the atmosphere and the noise of all the air horns and the Christmas lights I mean the kids absolutely loved it it was a brilliant well worth well worth going down there to go and see it, it was about two hours 20 minutes down there like uh, but it was well worth it I thought um, and the kids loved it too so um, well done to Ollie for organising such a, a great event like because it really really was it really really was worth seeing um, so yeah right I'm gonna go and service this digger and I'll meet you when we get there all right so a DX 55 this one so what's the difference between the 50 and the 55 I'm gonna say it's this extra counterweight on the back makes it that little bit heavier uh, so I'm just having a look over my cell, we've got fuel filter, fuel filter, engine oil filter, engine filler, where's the engine filler at? There, of course, that's handy enough, that's good. I'm not sure when I take this engine oil filter out, where the engine oil's going to go to, I'll have to put a rag in there. Um, and then I've got a return filter for it, and that's going to go in there, so that's handy. Yeah, everything looks pretty good to be getting at, to be fair. So, what size sump bung have we got? We've got a belly plate, and then we've got a screw-on cap. I'll get my pipe out, and we'll drain the engine oil out. Good. Doesn't look too bad. We'll get on. Engine oil's draining. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a slow drainer. It might be that pipe that I use because it's the same pipe that I use on the 140, 160s and it seems slow. Uh, anyway, it's coming out. I suppose I could have used that bung there. Maybe in future I'll use that bung. Get it all drained out quickly. I'll let that do that and I'll get on with these filters. Do this engine oil filter first. Yeah, engine oil filter went well. I put a rag down in the bottom of that well basically where the start motor is and um, it trickled a bit out didn't make too much of a mess so that's good uh, I'm going to do this filter next so I'll put a tray underneath here and I'll drain all the fuel out of here because if I take that off it'll just splatter everywhere so I'll do that well there we go a uh, fuel filters changed in there that one's changed the old one had a little bit of discoloration around here um, but not to be worried about I don't think so, yeah, once again, Doosan have made a very service-friendly machine, I think. Everything was, everything's handy to get out, I find, with these machines. Just in places where you're not having to reach your arm up in and get engine oil running down your arm and stuff. So, no, it's good. Right, I'll get this return filter done. Engine oil is still draining. With it being a trickle at the start, you don't know if it's a trickle at the end. Well, maybe we'll just take that bung out 
once I've finished the return filter and just see how much is left in it. Might be a good idea. Okay, hydraulic return filter done. Um, this is maybe more for my benefit, but anybody wants to change the auxiliary hydraulics from one way to two way, change over valves down here. So you'll turn it quarter turn and that'll change it from one way to two way. Um, so if you're swapping from like a, a grab and putting a hammer on it or flail or something like that that needs a one way feed, that's where you turn it over at. I know with the six and the eight tonners, they were hidden underneath the floor mat. Um, what you'd do is you'd stand in the doorway, peel the floor mat back, there'd be a little gap in the floor like that, just inside the doorway, and you'd put a spanner down there and sort of do two flats and that would turn it over. And the amount of phone calls I would have before they didn't know, um, want to put a hammer on it and it wasn't working and vice versa. Um, the six and the eight tonners, they were well hidden like, but yeah, if anybody running one of these, just down there. So I've only engine out to go back into this. Now, there was some waste oil in this drum. It's about half full now, but uh, the starsman Dan has put in the service schedule. So I can see that it needs 9.2 litres of engine oil so uh, I'll probably just measure out nine point well I'll measure out nine litres and dip it and just top it up accordingly um, it's got that little narrow hole there which me uh, funnel will just sit on top of and flop it well the funnel will probably sit down like that so I'll just pour it in with my jug for this one all right so I stopped at eight litres I measured out eight litres in that two litre jug I mean they were they were jugs of two good two litres if you know what I mean um, and it was just over the top back obviously we've got the engine oil filter to fill um, I've just turned the ignition on the now and it's bleeding the fuel through which it seems to be doing without problems so um, yeah eight litres seems to be enough at the moment what I'll do obviously I'll start it let it run for a minute or two and stop it and we'll just double check uh, with enough oil in it I'll just wait till this has bled up a bit. It's sounding like it's nearly there. Did I mention as well that it's a lot warmer today? I can't remember if I mentioned, but when I was uh, leaving the yard, the van was saying 16 degrees. When I got here, it was 14 degrees. So last week we were minus, well, coldest it got was minus 12. Um, and today it's 16 degrees. And honestly, that engine oil poured in there, absolutely lovely like. You do take it for granted. Um, so yeah, maybe if we we're gonna have minus 12 degree winters for two or three months of the year, then I probably would justify putting a night heater in the back of the van. But I mean, last that last 10 days was exceptionally cold, colder than usual anyway. Normally you see freezing, but only just freezing. So I can't really justify a diesel heater in the van but yeah it's a warm breeze that don't know how well you'll see that but eight litres is absolutely spot on i know before then i was saying about the engine oil just dribbling out but it did actually come to a stop so eight litres is sufficient um, and that'll just take it only just over the fill mark and when you start it obviously it'll fill that engine oil filter so absolutely spot on that all other levels are present and correct. Um, coolant is spot on. Hydraulic oil is spot on. I mean, the arm's not in the stretched out position, but it's still way up there, so that's good. Even the screen washer's screen washing. It's not often you see a digger with screen washing. I find that once it's been run out of screen wash, nobody bothers to fill them back up again. Anyway, right, I'll give the machine a workout now. Have a feel of it, make sure it's okay and then uh, pack up and get on to the next one so it's two o'clock it's a long time since we last spoke um i've just been at a machine that had some vandalism so i wasn't going to film what all went on there but um yeah that's that job jobbed 
the weather is wet as to be expected for this time of year and rather than heavy frost like we've had for the last 10 days I'm just on my way to probably what's going to be the last job of the day which is putting a set of batteries on a digger um, and then head for home I think because I haven't had a phone call to say that the slew motor is in and to be honest with you, if I had a phone call in the next five minutes to say that it was in, I'd be an hour back through to Carlisle. And then by the time I've loaded up and headed up to the job, it'll be dark, so hopefully we'll get on with that tomorrow. But I'm, in a way I'm pleased because I'm getting all these sort of loose end jobs tied up and uh, I'm knocking jobs off my list of jobs to do which is good because that list last week was looking longer and longer anyway I'll see you at the next one and uh, I mean it won't be too interesting I suppose putting a set of batteries on but we'll go and have a look at it right I've got this new digger here and um, what am I going to tell you? Batteries are completely stone dead flat. Stone dead flat. So I've got a couple of new ones on the van and I'm going to replace them, which is actually easier said than done on these zero tail swings. It's a bit of jiggery pokery trying to get them out of here. Um, but I think, yeah, I'll have to I'll take that plate off there. Just two thirteens behind there. Let that lie back. Take that off, that off, that off. Hopefully get this out in one piece. So what am I going to need? 10, 13, 12 and 17 by the looks. Yeah, we'll have a go at this. Right, these are the new ones. All ones are out. Just need to slide these ones in without crushing any wiring or any plugs. <laughs> See how that goes. Whew, they're heavy. Heavy enough anyway. Near that rain battering off the roof. It is wild out there now. There we go, all done. We'll jump in the cab now and see if it'll want to start. Before it was just putting up all sorts of error codes. Like, I mean, loads and loads of error codes. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go and give it a go. Well, it started, no bother. Voltages are looking good. Yeah, before you could press the button and it wouldn't even try and switch the machine on um, and I give it a little kick up the back side and I could get it to turn the ignition on but there was all sorts of error codes I wonder if the error codes are still stored I'll have a look service menu come along there we go uh, yeah failure information failure log yeah there's loads look Voltage below normal, voltage below normal, voltage below normal, voltage below normal. 17 cords. Voltage below normal. <laughs> right. I'll chuck my stuff in the van. Um, is it now? Is that the right time? 10 past 4? Can't be. No. Quarter past 3. Change that time while we're in here. Yeah, um, what I'll do is I'll nip back through to Carlisle because... Hopefully the pressure washer isn't all frozen up anymore and I can give the van a right good clean. Um, even though I'm heading up into the woods tomorrow, hopefully. Um, I could do with getting all that salt off it. So I think that's what I'll do for the rest of the afternoon. But a good day done. I've got everything done that I want to do. So we'll leave it at that. Um, yeah, I'll probably uh, see you tomorrow on the next video. So thanks very much for watching if you've enjoyed it give it a like and uh, any comments any questions just go ahead and ask us down in the comments section and we'll get back to you where I can I've not been very good lately um, getting back to comments I've just been pretty busy with work as you've seen so I do my best but uh, yeah thanks again and we'll see you on the next one